All right, so in this video, we're going to go over the specifics of setting up Cloud9. Now, just to recap, Cloud9 is a cloud-based developer environment. So what that means is that it contains everything you need to create applications and have databases, um, basically a terminal alongside of a text editor, all in one inside of your browser so that you can instantly get, and I know I sound a bit like a marketing shill for Cloud9, I promise I'm not, we don't have any sort of deal, I wish we did, but what it lets you do is get something going really quickly and very, very painlessly. So the first step is to sign up for an account. So if you visit the URL c9.io, um, or you click on the link in the description, but it's a pretty short URL, c9.io, you should uh, see this page if it's your first time visiting and you don't already have an account. If you already have an account from another course, you can wait until the next step where we create our new workspace. So if you don't have an account, all you have to do is enter your email, hit sign up. You'll have to fill in some information, pick a username, choose the kind of developer that you are, choose how you'll use Cloud9, click next. Make sure your details are correct. Now this is where some people may panic, uh, but don't panic. It asks you for credit card information. Now, if you notice here, it does say that you will not be charged. So there is a perfectly uh, functional free tier of Cloud9, but you do have to have a credit card to sign up this way. Now, as I said, don't panic because if you don't have a credit card, which I know a sizable number of my students actually don't have credit cards. They, you may come from a country where credit cards aren't as prevalent. Um, you may be too young to have a credit card, or you just may not have one for some other reason. And that's totally fine. It's not a barrier to using Cloud9. It's a little bit of a tiny hurdle. So there is a workaround. So Cloud9 offers educational accounts for teachers and instructors. And what that allows me to do, or allows you to do, uh, is to sign up without having to use a credit card. Now, the only problem is that I have to manually add you in as a student under my educational workspace. So again, it does take a bit more time because either me or one of the TAs will have to manually add you in, but we're committed to doing that. We wanna make sure that everyone can follow along even if you don't have a credit card. Now, if you do have a credit card, I do recommend that you just fill this out because you will not be charged and it's just gonna be faster. You won't have to wait for me to wake up in the morning and check the discussion boards on Udemy. You'll just be able to get started right now. So once you've filled all that information in and completed the sign up process, you should see a screen like this, although you won't have any of these workspaces here. So in Cloud9, when you create a new workspace, what you're actually doing is creating a new developer environment, separate partitioned off environment that you can work in. So actually you can see here, I have a couple of different environments going. Some of these I use all the time, like the one for my web dev bootcamp course. Some of them are just, you know, here's a test that I made to see how a Ruby environment works um, in Cloud9. Or here's one where I installed my SQL, which is what we'll be doing in just a moment. So step two is to actually go ahead and create a workspace. So we click create a new workspace and you're welcome to call your workspace whatever you want. I'm going to call it MySQL underscore course. And then I'll go ahead and set it to be public. It's up to you if you want your work to be private or public, but you don't really need to worry about anybody seeing what you're doing anyways. Um, but if you do wanna make it private, that is how Cloud9 makes some of their money. But I'm gonna make mine public. Then we have these templates down here that we can choose from. So there are these presets that allow us to create a new developer environment really quickly. And that doesn't really matter for us in this case. So you can pick any of them, but I recommend you just pick HTML5. It's the simplest one. Uh, basically, it's gonna be an empty workspace for us. So then we click Create Workspace. We wait a little bit and wait a little more. And finally, once it's done, you should see something like this. So that's it for this video. In the next video, we're gonna talk about what this interface means and how we navigate it.